setup, how I warm up for deadlifts, how I build deadlift strength, all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to do like a mini series, it's going to be like three or four parts where I just break down my deadlift each part. This part I'm going to go over my deadlift warm up, next part I'll probably go over my deadlift setup. There's like a big misconception about warm ups, people think that you should be able to just go in straight in the gym and use like the bar and then jump from like the bar to like a certain weight and then warm up that way. People who say like oh if you do warm up you should be doing like three exercises, no more than three exercises shouldn't be taking longer than 10 minutes, all that sort of stuff. It should be based on how active you are, how much you're walking around, how much you move, 
what kind of lifestyle you live, your injuries, what kind of job you work. If you're working like a site or you're, or you're working in like a warehouse, you should probably do like four or five different exercises, maybe doing some mobility, maybe doing some stretching, some band work. Because if you just walk straight in, you're probably gonna get injured. So the first exercise I do, no matter, I do it pretty much every single day. It doesn't matter if I'm gonna train chest, doesn't matter what I'm doing, I will do the deep squat every single day. Sometimes I'll do it twice a day if I'm feeling like tight when I wake up. But before every single um, gym session, I will do the deep squat. You can also add um, weight on the list. So if you struggle to hit depth, if you don't really know how to use the mobility yet, you can actually add on um, like a dumbbell. Pretty much, I just sit at the bottom and sometimes I'll rock side to side, back and forward. Or like I'll try to touch my knees to the floor and bring them back up for um, ankle mo 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 uh, English. Hello? Ankle mobility. But I normally do this from like anywhere from like two minutes to like 10 minutes and I only do it once. It's just really dependent on how you feel. If I feel really bad going to the gym, if I feel, if I feel stiff, I'll do this for like 8-10 minutes. If I feel really good, if I don't really feel that like um, restricted when I go into the gym, I'll hold it for like 2, 3, 4 minutes. Next thing I'll do is the Kozak squat. There is like a million different variations you can do on this here. I'm going to show you like beginner to like advanced on the Kozak squat. Basically, um, what I do on the Kozak squat is I'll get a kettlebell, I'll go the whole way down, ask the grass, and then I'll put my knee flat, and then I'll go the whole way back up and then the whole way back down. This here is really good for building strength in the abductor. So if you're a beginner doing the Kozak squat and you can't just go ass the grass completely with your weight, what you can do is you can get like a pole, a stick, you can hold on to a squat rack and just lower yourself down as far as you can, making sure you want the, the leg extended is completely straight the entire time. You should be feeling a stretch like in the abductors, so it's like in like your inner thigh sort of. The next step up from like using a pole or a squat rack as support, going down to the floor without any support, just holding it there for a second, trying to keep your balance. You can use your fingertips uh, to push yourself off the floor a bit, but I wouldn't really use them too much because um, that's sort of cheap. That's like using a Smith machine. Next step up, so you go the whole way to the ground, then you invert the knee that is bending, and then you go the whole way back up. And then the final step is you add in a weight, and you go the whole way down, you invert the knee, and then you go the whole way back up. And that's pretty much like all the, the main variations of the Kozak squat. Next is a side glute. This is like a pretty like self-explanatory simple exercise. It's literally just to open up your uh, glute. Next is the pigeon pose. Again, this is a really, really good exercise to open up your glute. I find this hits a lot more than like doing a side glute to be honest with you. I didn't get a video off it, but if you want to go up a level, you can like use a chair to like sort of elevate yourself off the floor a bit. This is the kneeling lunge. So basically, this is for your hip flexors. If you have like back pain or something, this is actually a good exercise that might help you. I do this for two to three sets. I'll hold it for 20, 30, 45 seconds and around that range. This here is a banded deadlift. I'll only do this once. I'll hold it for like two or three minutes. Basically, it's you're practicing keeping your knees backwards so they're not caving in. On top of that, it will help warm up your glutes and stuff like that there, get your glutes activated. Because if you're a sumo deadlifter, you want to be using your glutes. The next thing I do is a glute and adductor banded warm up. I'll do two sets of this. I'll do like 15, 20 reps. You're going pretty light. You pretty much want to hold it at the end of the movement. This is just getting your abductors and your glutes fired up for the lift and then after that there I'll just start deadlifting. That's pretty much all my warm up routine. It changes monthly if I'm injured. So if I have a certain injury I'll shift my deadlift warm up around that injury. Also it depends if I find a muscle group sort of lacking. A lot of um, warm ups I do for my deadlift is like a static stretch which most people are honestly against and I wouldn't really recommend it unless you know what you're doing. When you're doing static stretches, the warm up for deadlift, squat, bench, whatever it is. I would really, really go off how you feel. If you're in a static stretch for too long, you're gonna increase your chance of injury and you're gonna be weaker overall. If you're not feeling the stretch, don't do it at all. If you're feeling like any niggles, pains, whatever it is, don't do that stretch. I wouldn't recommend copying this warm up uh, completely as it is, cause this is really specific to me. This is just what I'm doing based off my body, based off my current injuries and my activity levels. I wouldn't really recommend doing this many static stretches for your warm ups. I'll just try some of these and just see what works and go from there. At the end of the day, your warm-ups should be just completely personalized. If you do try some of these exercises, just be cautious, just know your limit, and just know uh, how far you can really push yourself. Don't push yourself to the absolute limit, especially if it's a warm-up. Warm-ups are supposed to be for warm-ups. You're not supposed to push yourself in a warm-up. That is pretty much it. That is the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed. Any questions below, you can let me know. But that's all for me. Thanks for watching. See you.